Welcome to the Video Dictionary. Today, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm recording it live. I'm not streaming it live, but recording it live. So, we'll see how this goes. I want to see if I can save a little bit of time, maybe come up with a quicker way to make some of these things. I don't have as much time as I used to. Here's the word for this week. Worthwhile. Something that is valuable enough to spend some time working on. History and etymology. Okay. So, I'm going to kind of do my work right in front of you here. So, um, let's start with online etymology dictionary. This is one of the first places I go. And... Obviously, worthwhile is a compound word. It's an adjective. <clears throat> of worth and while. The phrase worthwhile is attested from the late 14th century, according to this, where it's the first time they found it used, written down. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting, where we break it down into its different words. Um, the Old English werth, way orth, I think that's how it's pronounced. Significant, valuable, of value, valued, appreciated, highly thought of, deserving, meriting, honor, noble, or of high rank. Um, seems to be from the Proto-Germanic "wethos" towards the meaning towards or opposite, hence equivalent worth. Okay, it looks like toward or opposite. How does something meaning toward or opposite? come to mean suitable or proper fit or even deserving of value or having value see at this point when I don't quite know the connections I'll go to the Oxford English Dictionary and again anyone can get access to this I've got access to it through the Multnomah County Library so Worthwhile. Well, let's go to, we were looking at worth, weren't we? Let's see if their explanation gets any more detailed. Um, it looks like they say it's coming from a different place. Or no, that's saying that's got cognates, meaning that it may have come from the same place, but from may have come from the same origin, but this is the word in different languages. Um, so Old High German, Wert, or Wert, Middle High German, Wert, Icelandic, Werther, Werther. Okay. And now what I like about the Oxford English Dictionary is it has the oldest known English definition of the word, and in this case, having a specified value. So it doesn't even mean it's something that has a high value, it's just something with a specified value. Um, having a specified monetary or material value. Okay. In some forms, the word is difficult to distinguish from... Um, now I'm reading some stuff about the... Here, let me make this full screen for you. Now I'm reading some stuff about this. The More stuff from the etymology. You know, I'm... I really appreciate Point Curation for recommending words. He picks some great words. 
but compound words, <laughs> I've done two of them in a row. So I've done counterculture and now I'm doing worthwhile. And that just kind of doubles the workload. It's harder to um, research things and have something concise and fun. And so I'd have to focus on one word or the other. Um, now, let's look at while. While could be fun. I've got to read everything. Huil. Strong feminine equals old Frisian huil. Huil. Frisian. Uh, huil. Old Norse, Old Germanic, Zu Zuilo, Latin Quis, and Old. Okay, I should have done a little bit more research before starting this video, but I think we're okay. It means a portion of time considered with respect to its duration. So the word time actually meant the same thing. I've been wanting to do the word time for a long time. So a while and <clears throat> a while just means a portion, a set portion of time. So the word really Okay, this video isn't coming together very well. I don't know if this is a very worthwhile way of doing this video, um, of doing videos. Let's see what the online etymology dictionary has to say about the word while. Old English willa, a space of time from Proto Germanic huilo, source also of Old Saxon huil and huila. Old High German Willa, Wheela. Okay, this is where the interesting stuff usually comes in. It's down at the bottom here. Um, from Proto Indo European, Quilo. Suffixed form of root, Qui, to rest or be quiet. Notion, period of rest, became Germanic period of time. So the word while literally meant like to while away the hours or to just rest by back from what they've determined in the old Proto-Indo-European. Actually, let's look up this word in the Proto-Indo-European. This is kind of how I do my research before I write the videos. So this is kind of an inside view and usually I have it much more well mapped out before I even consider recording, but I want to try and have a faster turnaround time and this doesn't seem to be working very well. But I think it's worthwhile to give it a try. Proto-Indo-European root meaning to rest or be quiet. It forms all or part of acquiescence, acquit, a while, coy. Hmm. Quies, quiescent, quiet, quietism, huh, that's some interesting connections there. Quittance, while, requite, quit, so it means to rest, to stop. Okay, see this is why I love this web page, you can follow it forever and just keep learning stuff. Um, it is the hypothetical source of slash evidence for its existence is provided by Avestan Shaitish Joy Shaiti Well-being Shaita Happy Old Persian I don't know what that little wedge means Say, Satish, joy, 
Latin, quies, rest, repose, quiet, old church, Slava. So this is cool that the word while, quay, in, from the Proto-Indo-European, that rebuilt language, seems to also be the root of words like quit. and koi and quiescence. So those are pretty interesting. Okay, so now we've come to the next portion of the uh, video. We're gonna do what I did for field research. So we'll start with uh, what came up on BitChute? Ray, um, worth equals value, and while appear exactly. I mean, this wasn't a difficult word to guess. PJS from DFW, uh, value divided by time equals productive. See, this is another compound that, this is compound actually seems really interesting, but I will probably avoid doing it until I've done the word where in the future. Okay, now, I liked this response here. This is we're back over over on YouTube. Um, oh, it's recommending equity for me now. From the Cozy Comfy Poetry Channel. Her definition of worthwhile is, do I put on lipstick or not? Clarified with that. So if you have to put on lipstick, that means it's worthwhile? Yep, she said, yep. <laughs> Apparently she just likes to put on lipstick. Now here, from the person that recommended the word, um, worthwhile, uh, point curation. When the time spent between conception and outcome has value comparable to the outcome, the unseen hours between apprenticeship and mastery are worthwhile. This is a really insightful answer to the question of what the definition of worthwhile means. It's very, very specific. I almost like this better than the one I gave you at the beginning. Um, is the time I'm spending doing the video like this going to be worth it or should I have spent even more time doing the video the way I used to do it with a lot more preparation. I'm pretty sure I should have done the more preparation route, but I want to see how people react to this format. And from Adherent of Lady Columbia, an item, concept, or goal that has an item, concept, or goal that has inherent value or is perceived as having such. So he's including that it something may be worthwhile even if it's not something even if it's only perceived as being something valuable, something that's worthwhile. And now over on my Patreon, um, we're going to take a look at what Mark Sparing had to say. He said it's something that's worth waiting for a while. This also may be a comment on how often I put out videos now. So I hope this is worth it. I'm up, I'm going to do your word next. Let me look at that. I'm going to look that up. So Mark here, 
I think you recommended the word anonymous. Um, I've got one word I want to do before that, and then I'm going to work on that one. So anonymous is coming up. That one should be fun. In fact, um, for the field research for anonymous, you can put that in the description below. I'll still make the field research video and ask the question directly to everyone. Now I think I had one response on Twitter this time from the dark MGTOW. From the top of my head, I'd say it means worth the time and or effort. Pretty simple. So now we come to the prescription and commentary portion of the video. I think what I'm doing here, making these videos about words, is very worthwhile. It's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. And if you follow me on social media, I've been complaining about my new day job, which it's a really good job. The compensation is good. It's my first time working where I... My pay is based on my performance. And it's not just a flat hourly rate. And I really like it. And it's easy to... It's easy to gauge how you're doing and improve and do better. So I'm enjoying it, but the, we've had a couple people quit recently, and I've been working several 10-hour days on a regular basis. And I come home, and I'm completely wiped out. I don't, I, before I wasn't talking at work. This job requires a lot of talking. And so when I come home and I sit down and I want to write, it's using the same mental muscles or something and they're exhausted. And I don't want to, to do that at the moment. So I wind up playing Tetris or something and, or some other video game. But this is worth doing, and I want to stick with it. I need to find some way that works. Now, what I really want to make, the, not only because I find this fun, but the thing that I want to get across in these videos, and I haven't been focusing on it because I've been trying to figure out a format and build an audience, but I think I need to get down to what I love about language is that it's a very complex system that works and is efficient and allows for amazing things to happen but it's all voluntary it's all spontaneous order without authority above it. That's what I find amazing about it, is it is one of the few places where you really see what freedom, freedom from authority and freedom from demagogues and people telling you what to do can actually bring people together and help create something beautiful, something useful, something that makes people's lives better. And what I really want to fight against is anyone that would want to control the way language develops. That's what that's what 1984 was about. 
That's what George Orwell wrote about in that book, was people trying to control the formation of language. People trying to set it in stone and tell people what they could and could not say, how they could and could not talk, what they could and could not think. And anytime someone tells you that you can't use a word for any reason, they're trying to control your mind. Now, you should be careful about the words you use because you'll never know how other people will interpret them. That's the other part of this beautiful thing called language, is you can't control what people think a word means. For a long time, bef during the 2016 election and all the way into 2015, there were several definitions of the word alt-right floating around. You can look at Milo's original article about it, where he talked about the alt-right as an alternative to the traditional right wing, but he didn't know that it was already being used by others who had a different definition of the word. So it is important to know what the definition of the word is and what others might perceive it to be because you can't control what they think it is. So when Milo used the word alt-right to describe himself, he didn't know others were going to automatically lump him in the camp with the Nazis. Another one, I was arguing with one of my friends about the word feminism. I posted the picture of I think it was the uh, Washington Post article that said, <clears throat> um, is it okay to, or why is it okay, why, why can't we hate men was the headline. And it replaced men with the word Jews. And she responded, this isn't what feminism is. You're, you're, you're making a straw man of what feminism is. And I responded, Feminism is a word, and the definition that's in the head of this person at the Washington Post, and probably her employers who hired her because she's a feminist, think that's the definition. They think it's okay to hate men. And then there are the people that, like Sargon and the honey badgers, who think it means the same thing as the woman at the Washington Post. You can't tell them they're wrong because their definition of the word is man-hating. So that's what makes language difficult and complex. And that's also what makes it beautiful, is that we've got enough words that people agree on the definitions of that we can actually communicate. This may have been a bit rambly, but thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. I know this has been a long entry. Um, If you want to help support the project, you can go to my Patreon. Um, I've just added a tier a while ago, where if you want... I love words with friends. I don't have enough people to play with. So, at the $10 level, I will play as much words with friends with you as I possibly can. And another one that I really want to do... I'm gonna, here, I'm going to go to my Patreon and I'll show you all these. 
<clears throat> I'm probably gonna start building this soon. Um, I want to start building these. I want to start making these postcards. I want to mail out postcards with definitions and my artwork and mostly photography and start doing that. If, if there's anything else that you think would be a better um, uh, reward for these different tiers, let me know. I'd be glad to add whatever you guys want within reason. So you can also follow me on Twitter at Lexicachographer. You can also find me on, where is it? Gab and Mines. That's not, that's the wrong Gab page. That's my personal. There we go. You can find me on Gab, Mines, and even, I've even got a Facebook page. So, join me on there. So, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on learning. <laughs>